This tutorial explains some of the special audio effects that I can generate within Audacity. As I'm looking at my audio file that I recorded earlier, I want to point out the ability to expand or to contract the timeline in order to see more or less of the sound file. By selecting plus, I'm moving in, zooming in, and I see, for example, two seconds worth of audio. And as I'm selecting minus, I'll see more, in this example, eight seconds worth of my audio. This can be important as I perhaps want to eliminate a specific um, noise within the audio. And zooming in allows me to visually see some of these noise peaks much better. Any change I would like to make in terms of adding an effect or generating an audio overtone has to be done by selecting with the selection tool all or part of the audio file that I want to manipulate. So I've selected approximately about three something seconds here at the beginning of my audio file. Now I can go into generate which is not necessarily editing my audio file but over imposing for example silence and you can see that my audio file has been completely eliminated and that for example allows me to clean up certain areas <coughs> of an audio file I'm gonna keep on doing in order to show you the next one or here I have the option to over impose white noise so now I have the option to overimpose white noise. So this basically explains some of the generated effects. Here now the actual editing effects that I can change and manipulate the audio file. Some of these effects are very useful, very professional. Some of them are more or less useless. <laughs> so, for example, I can change the speed of the audio file. That would be the kind of thing at the end of the commercial where they say, um, you know, tax and license are not included and <laughs> that goes in a much higher speed. That would be, for example, the application. So I'm going to go from 0 to 117%. You can see a visual change in the audio file, and here is the actual sound output. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And by the way, it's only playing back the area that I have highlighted. If I deselect the highlight, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you can see the difference. Then going into an other effect, for example, I can change the pitch. I can go way low right here, percentage changes down, and let's see what that sounds like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For example, and I have other effects, fade in and fade out, very helpful effects. If I'm mixing, for example, my sound file with, or my voice file with a music in order to <coughs> create a little intro loop or a little exit loop so I can do a fade in or a fade out and you can see already the visual change one two three four five six seven until my voice completely disappears and here are again a whole list of other effects that I would invite you to explore try them all out here is a fun one those of you that were or that are old enough in the 80s there was kind of this Christian um, witch hunt on backwards masking in um, rock music lyrics and so here is actually the tool to do it the reverse in the so that was me backwards again all these special effects are located right here in addition, I want to point out the ability to manipulate the sound file 
with some of the <coughs> other tools like what we call the envelope tool. The envelope tool allows, for example, let me expand this a little bit, to create a volume manipulation on both channels by double clicking and adding certain manipulation points I can now increase or decrease the volume of any area of my sound file. This is what this would sound like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can create various fading in and fading out options. This can be very helpful again if I want to mix my sound file, my voice so to speak, with a music file that I want to blend in and blend out in the background, for example, during an interview. And as mentioned, there are other special effect tool, special effects tools and other functions in this menu group that I don't need to explain in detail. I do want to point out that Audacity has an excellent help file, a very good menu that's a help menu that is divided up into all the specific toolbar areas. And in general, I want to encourage you as a journalist, as a digital media producer, always to look at help files, to look at help tutorials of a new software application that you um, need to fami familiarize yourself with. In addition, I do want to briefly point out the ability to change the quality of the output file. Once you have installed the LAME encoder, for example, the MP3 encoder, under Preferences, Audio Quality, and here File Formats, you have then the option to export in different what's called bit rates. 128 is the most common bit rate in MP3 file. Most music files that you would download in MP3 format would be in 128. But if it's not necessary that you have an extremely high audio quality, you can change this to lower bit rates in order to achieve a smaller file size. For example, voice, an interview, or preaching does not need to be as in high quality as music may, uh, may need to be. And so this will give you some options to export a file that is still in acceptable quality but smaller and therefore can be easier and faster downloaded and would take up less space on a portable MP3 player, for example. This concludes the basic overview of the special effects and generated effects here within Audacity.